My name is uh, Lyndon Sampang, retired sergeant, uh, U.S. Army Infantry, 101st Division, 3rd Brigade, 187 Rakasans. I was stationed in Fort Campbell and we, we deployed in Afghanistan, Pakteka province. I was injured by a ambush, RPG blast. Lost my right leg below the knee. When I saw the 9-11, when I saw everything happen, I said I need to enlist. So I joined when I was 27 as Army National Guard for Alaska. Hi everybody, I'm Christy Lucas, CEO of Roots for Boots, and I am your guest host here today on another episode of Open House. And I have a very special guest here with me, Cindy Sampang. And she is the wife of Lyndon Sampang. And Lyndon is one of our veterans who has benefited from your donation dollars to Roots for Boots, mm -hmm. right? And we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. But right now, we want to focus on military families because I know that during the month of November, everybody knows that Veterans Day hits in November, November 11th. Mm -hmm. But people might not know, but it's also Military Family Appreciation Month. So we thought it'd be nice to see the perspective of a military wife, mm -hmm. um, you know, how, how you dealt with things before, during, and then after a deployment. So Lyndon, he was born in the Philippines, yes. right? And you're from the Philippines, yes. right? Okay. So he was born and grew up in the Philippines. And then as a young adult, he moved to Alaska, mm -hmm. right? Now, do you yeah. know why did His he... family and him, they migrate to Alaska. Okay, so they came to Alaska. All right, so then as a young adult, he was there. So he, he had told us that 9-11 compelled him to enlist into the Army. So that really meant something to him. So can you tell us, tell your story, how you met Lyndon? Oh my God. Okay, up to that point where he decides to enlist if yeah. you, were, you were together then? Yeah, but time. no, by that time we haven't met each other okay. yet. Okay, He's already in National Guard He's when already we met, okay. Yep. So how'd you meet? Uh, in a simply picture. Um, I have a cousin, he's a National Guard too. Okay. And then they were buddy in Alaska. So I sent a picture to my cousin and then put my phone number. And that's the, that's the way we met each other. He saw my picture and then he started calling me. Okay. And then I think after a year, he went back home to Philippines to see me. Okay. And when we saw each other, to be honestly, I fell in love with him. Oh. And that's the first time we saw each other. Yeah. And so it was like a long distance yeah, relationship? Is it, yeah, we, there's no video chat before when, right. we, when we met. Um, basically, he just called me, hearing our voice, that's it. Uh -huh. But we never seen each other in person. And then when he visited me in Philippines, that's the first time we saw each other. And you like, knew it was meant to be. Yeah, I call that destiny. <laughs> no kidding. I call that destiny. You're so yeah. cute. <laughs> okay, so then... Um, he, he served in Iraqi freedom. Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think that was, that was around 2008. And then he did another deployment in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, that's when his life changed, yes. you know, through the injury that he received when he was there. So can you, can you tell us, um, like, how did you prepare for his deployment? Like he, he tells you, you know, I'm going to be deployed. I'm going to Iraq or I'm going to Afghanistan. How, how, how does a, a, a family prepare for that? Especially for us, um, we're, we're far. Like, I, I was in the Philippines and he was here. Okay. The mostly we can do is pray, especially for me. Okay. Pray for him, wherever he go. Um, it's pretty hard because it's like for six years by the time he went to Afghanistan and Iraq, for six years we've been married. I think we just saw each other like three times. Mm -hmm for six years of relationship we have. Right. Basically, we just, we just talk by the phone. And then, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I can do for him is pray for him. Because I can't, I can't, I wasn't in here. I can be there for him, like 
you know? Do you think it's harder on your end than it was on his? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. mm -hmm. it's like you don't really know, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on. And then, of course, when that day came, you know, when that's when he was in Afghanistan, right? Mm -hmm. So you were talking on the phone with him, right? So then, so then pick up there. So he called you? Yeah, he called okay. me. Just Well, by that time, that year, we had the Skype. Very okay. video chatting every okay. day, every single day. Okay. And then um, he told me, I'll be back in 15 minutes. Just wait for me. I was just, mm -hmm. that's the, our, our normal routine every single day. Okay. He so, called me. So you were able to talk with him every single day? Sometimes when he get a chance. Okay. But he's <laughs> trying his best to call me so, uh, you know, so I don't have to worry about him. Yeah. He's, he, so that day before they got ambushed, um, he told me that, wait for 15 minutes. I'll be back. And I was, that's the first time, like 20, 30 minutes he haven't called yet. So you were talking on the phone with him and he said, I gotta go. Mm -hmm. Did he have to do a patrol? Yes, Is that what they he have did? to go okay, to so a patrol. patrol. Yep. And then how long would that normally take? Like how long did, would you like expect? Sometimes less than 15 minutes. Okay, okay. he's back. So right 15 there. minutes has passed, but still no call. Yeah, and then I got worried like, okay, this is not normal. And then I, Suddenly, r my phone rang. I was just waiting for him to be the chat. It's like, uh, it's a long distance call, so I have to pick it up. I thought it was him. It's like, and then I heard it was the, the military. Mm -hmm. And they were telling me that my husband got uh, ambushed and he got injured. After that, I didn't get any answer so, whatever so I what asked was, for them. So what was, what was it like when that phone rang and you picked it up and it wasn't him? I was thinking it was him because right. it doesn't register the number for right. the international call. I mean, international call. It doesn't show who. It's just the number. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I just thought it was him. And then when I heard, it, it's like, hey, uh, is this Mrs. Sampang? And then it continued the, their Did story. Did you know something was wrong right when you know it wasn't him? I, I feel worried before they call me. It's like different, different feeling mm -hmm. that I never felt. And then even though I asked them what, hap what happened to him, you know, and more questions, they cannot give me any answer. Wow. And I have to wait for them to call me back just to get the And you didn't know answer. if he was alive. Exactly. Well, That's that my happened. first question. Is he alive? They didn't give me any answer. Yeah. And I have to wait. Were you by yourself when you got that call? With my grandma. Oh. So what was that like? What was the... What'd you tell your grandmother? I told my grandmother that something happened. Mm -hmm. And then she's the one who comforted me that time. Well, you know what? I think God put her there because he knew you were gonna get that call then mm -hmm. and, and you needed somebody to be there with you. Mm -hmm. But look what he's done with Lyndon and we'll get to that later, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like a Roots for Boots rock star. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't think yes. any, any wife or girlfriend or fiance or, or family member or friend for that matter ever wants to get a call like that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the, the fear of the unknown, yeah. you know, especially it, since it, they weren't giving you information. Maybe they didn't have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, it's um, really hard. It's really hard for us because we're, 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 I'm there and he's here, you know. I cannot just go right over just to be with him, right. beside him, you know. Right, he's it's, so far away. Mm -hmm. As long as you look on a map and you see that's where he is and this mm -hmm. is where you are, you know, and there's just mm -hmm. so many miles between you. I think I've, more than a week, I, I, I don't even sleep and eat at the hall, yeah. So then when did you find out that, that he was okay, but that there's a possibility that he, you know, he was going to have an injury that was going to change his life? I, think, I still thank God, uh, even though he lost his leg, yeah. at least... He's alive, you know? Yes. That's, yeah. I still. But how much, how much time passed in between there? So you get the call, you don't know if he's alive or not. And then when did they tell you that he is, but he might have to have part of his leg amputated? I think they, uh, I remember they called me around lunchtime. So it was that same day? No. Oh, okay. I have, I think I waited the next morning. For that the, was a long They night. called me, yeah. That's why I didn't sleep that, yeah. that night. I even called the hospital, they gave me the number, but they haven't 
they haven't given me any information. Mm -hmm. I have to wait for them. So was he at Walter Reed? Is that where he was? Yes. Okay, Walter eventually. Reed. Yeah. yeah. At Walter eventually, Reed? Eventually, yep. And is that where you were reunited with him? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They picked me up at the airport. Now, how long of a wait was that? Before? The time that the, the accident happened to, and we should say that his vehicle was hit by a RPG, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think it's important. And I know I've, I've been in schools with Lyndon, and he's talked about this story. Mm -hmm. And he talks about when he came to, his yes. foot was actually over here. Mm -hmm. And he used his belt as a tourniquet, tourniquet and pretty yep. much saved his mm -hmm. own life. And then he talks about how when he finally woke up, he saw the lights, the lights yep. from the uh, hospital, mm -hmm. and he actually thought he was dead. dead. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. Yes, he laughs about it now, but you know, <laughs> it wasn't funny then, I'm sure. Okay, so then... You're reunited with him in the hospital, so bring us to that time now. What was that? Like? Well, when the first time, well, the first time when I saw him mm -hmm. at the airport, it was in the airport. They you saw up. him at the airport. Yes, uh, because it took us like um, two weeks. Okay. Uh, to get it done, all my per paperwork uh, to Philippines to come over here. Okay. And then, he's a, he got a good positivity. Uh, attitude. He try and do his best to mm -hmm. to like to walk as soon as possible. That doesn't he was surprise on the, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was on the cane. He's trying, right. you know. And then they pick me up at the airport. My first words like, "Oh, you still look good like before." Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and give him a hug. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. bet that was a happy day. It was. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now the kids weren't there then, right? No. Okay. No. They 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 came later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so so during that time, you talked about your grandmother when you got the call, and um, I mean, thank God that she was there for you and you weren't mm -hmm. alone when when you got that call. So was there anyone else during that time that you could lean on? When I got here, mm -hmm. uh, I met a Puerto Rican. Um, she's a military wife too and her husband got injured. So we live at the same time at the Walter Reed. Uh -huh. And then it's her first time, I think she migrated here. Mm -hmm. So we're basically the same situation. Right. So we're understanding everything, mm -hmm. bilingual and et cetera, you know. She's the one person that I, that I mostly, yeah, mostly yes. talk to and then ask question about, because I don't, when I, it's a lot of adjustment for me. Mm -hmm especially in our relationship. And that's the first time when I came over here, that's the first time, like a normal and husband and wife mm -hmm. together. Right. We've right. never been together for a longer time. Right. Basically, Lyndon got a, like three weeks vacation, that's it. Right. Then in six, like what I said earlier, six years of relationship, we seen each other like three times. That's because he it. was gone. He was gone. Yes. I was there and he is here. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, um, how can I say that? Like, um, I don't mostly understand what is the military has, their PTSD and everything. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it's really hard for me. But yeah, I did my best and to support him, yep. to understand everything. Um, so I can show it to him that I'm gonna be there for you no matter what. You guys have a really special relationship. You do. Yeah. I love the way you look out for each other. You have a beautiful family. You thank know, you. You don't let anything get in the way of your family. So my next question was going to be whether any military, uh, military wives that helped you through it. Because I imagine that's, that's a club that most women don't want to be in. But when you find yourself in it, you know, yeah. it's, it's good mm -hmm. to provide that support for each other and to yes. have you yeah, know, the experiences true. and all that. When, when we are in Walter Reed, I don't feel like... I'm starting meeting all the military wives mm -hmm. over there. They're like uh, your sister. Were you in the Fisher houses at all when yes, you were there? Yes, in okay. Malong house. Okay. We stayed there like for almost four years. Mm -hmm. And mostly the military wives, they're like, they're like a family. They're like a sister. Well, you're in the Fisher house. We did some work with the Fisher houses early on in Roots for Boots. And I, and I know they, they really work hard to provide that, that common area mm -hmm. where um, but the, the veterans, the active duty, uh, and the, the family can, you know, share those times like, like, like you did. Yeah. Have meals together. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't that. feel like a hotel. 
it's more like it's a home. Not. It's like it's a home. home. Yep, and I yep. know that's mm -hmm. that's their goal. Mm -hmm. So that's wonderful that it, that you um, that you were able to to stay there and be able to just walk back and forth. Yes. You didn't have to have a long drive to be able to see him, yes. which is another philosophy of the, the Fisher houses, mm -hmm. to keep the families close. Especially Friday night. What was Friday night? They do grilled and everything just to hang oh, out with nice. everybody. Yeah, that's yeah. our Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. Our routine over there is hospital. Right. Therapies, hospital, checkup. Etc. Then Friday night is kind of our relaxing time after the hospital. Then they're gonna do grill barbecue. It's funny you say that because the um, the patio furniture that's over there. Oh, Bruce for Boots brought that down. A lot oh, of that patio I furniture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, down. I, to, I won't forget that uh, place. <laughs> <laughs> We've been there for like almost four years. So. Well, I'm glad you had a good experience with that because they are. That's another another great. great and I choice. met a lot of military wives uh -huh. over there. Do you, were, do you still keep in contact? Yes. Good. Yeah. Good. Until now. It's like, like, like what I said, they're like a family. They're like yes. your sister. They will, you can lean on them if you want to, like, like if you're thinking like you need someone to talk to, yeah. military wise, they're going to be there for you. Yeah. And I, th and I think, I think you need people like that, especially when you have an experience like, like you all have. Yeah. That's what I, I started, you know, asking questions. What do they do? Because they are like them, unlike us, they are with their husband. Mm -hmm. They got more experience than me. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, you know, learn everything, all the process that I need to learn to understand my husband, what, what happened to him, to support him. How can I support him? How can I stand with him? You know, it's, it's really hard. So, so, so that whole experience there, did that prepare you for what might come afterwards with dealing with his yes. his injury and his yes. yeah it's, it's not easy but yeah yeah now how how was it for him like coming back and he's <clears throat> medically retired how was it for him to be able to adjust with not having part of his leg anymore and not being able to do some of the things that he loved to do before it's hard yeah it's hard for him because uh, I know um, it took him years of years, even though he say, OK, I'm good. You know, I can do this. But the next day. So was it kind of up and down like a roller yeah. coaster mm -hmm. for a little bit? Yeah. Until he realizes what his limitations are and what he can actually do. Yeah. But I think Lyndon's the type of person where they're really he hasn't mm -hmm. put any limitations on himself. Mm -hmm. What he's been able to do has been incredible. Yeah. And he's still saying like, um, He's still, before, like I think two years, three years, he's still missing what he's doing like before without his leg. Now compare what he can do now. Yeah. Is it hard for him to look at pictures of himself before the injury? Not anymore. Okay. But before, yes. Yes. And it's like, oh, I have my leg on that picture. <laughs> like, for example, he saw pictures or video. Oh, yeah, that's my leg. No. Now, one of the things that was done here in Gettysburg to really help you guys was homes for our troops, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, um, and you know, for people that don't know what that charity does, they 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 build the homes, right, yes. for our, our veterans who have had injuries like Linden or worse, and they, the the house is adapted to their adapted. needs. Adapted. Yep. So, what year was that? Do you remember? Or how long have you six been in the house? Years, six years now. More six, than years. six years. Okay, so you've been in the house for six years. Like th so, 2018? Oh. Because originally you were in like a two-story house. It had, yes. There were stairs. There were hills. Yes. Or the backyard had a hill. Mm -hmm. The front yard had a hill. So it was really... And people don't really think about that. Even though he has a prosthetic that he uses, it's not... It's a struggle for them. It, it's especially not natural. The stairs. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It is a struggle. So then they came in and they provided him this one floor. Mm -hmm. And then what else does it have for him that makes his life a, li a little bit easier? Uh, before you always get bruises on his leg. Okay. And basically he uses wheelchair when we have the house wheelchair during the summertime because he get that scratch. Yes. The slim is very sensitive, mm -hmm. and because we got the hill and not an e uneven um, yard. And the original but house. But now, yeah. Yes. But now, he never get a, get to use his wheelchair since we moved to the house. Right. It's a big change. So that was the biggest thing, just getting him out of the wheelchair? Yes, and very more comfortable now with a shower. Okay. 
And before I have to help him out all the time okay. with the shower we have, yeah. go into the bathroom, yeah. So it restored a lot of the independence that was taken away. And that's, that, that's you know, areas that some of us don't even think about. He's more free now yes. to do something, yes. what he wants, especially in the garage. And he can help you more around the yes, house, before, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, that's true. Before, um, he, he can do it, but he's uncomfortable right. to go to stairs, so I have to do it. Right. Now he's like, he's good. Limits. Mm -hmm. Right. And I have to be with him most of the time before. And that probably makes him feel better. Yes. You know, that he's not, because I know a lot of veterans like, like Lynn and they don't want to be dependent on people. You know, they want to be able to. <laughs> That's to, the Yeah, so well, yeah. And they're providers and mm -hmm. they're, you know, strong men. So they just want to, you know, be able to, to do their thing. Mm -hmm. And when that's Before I have life. to ask him, are you, okay, can you do it? Are you okay? Okay, let me do it, like yes. that. But now. He can do it. Yeah, it's like normal. Is there yeah. anything he really can't do around the house? Hmm. Because he, he's able to drive. Yes. Right? And then, of course, Roots for Boots, for those of you that don't know out there, we, we uh, provided him with a beautiful truck. It's basically that house make him like, uh, like normal before when uh -huh. he got his leg. Yes. Yeah, he's free now to that house. Okay. He's good. He's good. Yeah. So the one thing we did was got him off of two wheels and onto three because he was having some, some problems uh, handling the, the two wheels and then you couldn't and ride I'm, with him on mm -hmm. it. And I'm worried for him. Yes, yes. yes. So now, uh, how's, how's the trike doing? It's good, we enjoy it. <laughs> That's awesome. We, that we was ride a lot. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's awesome. So what do you think, thinking back on this now, like what was the biggest challenge during that time? Other than not being able to see him, um, you know, not be there with him when he was in the hospital for a little bit. What was the, the biggest challenge for you guys? Mm. I mean, was it um, just the house that you had and, and it not being conducive to be able to help him to do what he needed to do around the house? Was it, I mean, what Yeah, that's what? include that and that, that thing, because he's not free to the house, he can do anything. Um, he feel like, is he going to be like that forever? So what was the biggest challenge for you then? I'll ask it. I'll ask it that way. So the biggest challenge for him would have been house A compared to house B now. But what, what was it for you? I mean, watching him was um, like, like what was going through through your mind and through your heart as you're, you're watching him struggle? Or was that the challenge <sighs> you know, that you had to watch him, this man that you... I I wish I can let him feel it like he, he's still normal mm -hmm. and I wish I can see him do what he can he was doing before when we had that house mm -hmm. yeah that's the were you his biggest cheerleader yes yes <laughs> I always do for him I have to I have to. I have to be strong in front of well, him. Behind every great man. Yes. Isn't you, you know, an even greater woman. Yep, <laughs> a strong cool. woman. Mm -hmm. Well, for Lyndon always says military wives are the toughest. Yes. yes. And I think, you know, when you hear what they have to go through and what they have to deal with, you know, it does. I mean, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Mm -hmm. So, so um, I know that the kids weren't there when all the trauma and all that was going on. But how do, how do they see that? Well, my uh, my daughter, when when he when he's out, like uh, she she didn't like ask him uh, or wondering what what happened to my dad, why he doesn't have a leg, you know. They just, just see it as normal. Because yes, they as don't a know normal, any. yeah. And then when my daughter start under, I mean, to understand everything, she he just told her the story what happened to mm -hmm. him. So. And never, they never seen him like, um, like different. Right. You know. Right. And I think he serves as a great example, uh, you know, for for the, the the kids that you know you you can do anything mm -hmm. really, um, you know. And and I know Lyndon has a strong faith yes. as well, which he, I, he has I, a positive you know, attitude too. Yeah. He does. Mm -hmm. He does. And he doesn't let anything stop him. So. Um, yep. That's true. So did you learn anything through this whole experience, this whole journey? It's still continuing. I did learn a lot. What did you learn? A lot, a lot. Um, how to be strong for the person you love. 
you have to be strong, especially for them with what they've been through. To be honestly, I almost gave up on the first year I, I got here mm -hmm. because I don't know how to, how to start or support him. I don't know how to be strong to him. Well, not only that, you're being thrown into a culture too that you're not. Yes. You know, this home wasn't here, at, mm -hmm. you know, at that time. So it was, you know, you, you had a lot that you were dealing with. You were kind because, of like in your own tornado. Yes, because when, when, we, when I got here, before, before that injury, um, we got a lot of plans. We got a lot of dreams. So that dreams like stop everything. Yeah. It changed everything. When I got here, I'm seeing like every single day, um, you feel like, is this, is this the same person that I married before? I feel like I'm still looking for that relationship we had before he got injured. I didn't see the, what, what's going on to him at first until I heard to the other military wives about the PTSD. So I start having, okay, I think I need to be strong for him because if, he's, if I'm not gonna be strong, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen to him. And I, what can I do? I love him. Yeah. So I have to be strong for him. Yeah, and, and that's awesome that you educated yourself mm -hmm. on what you could do, what it was, what, you know, I think, I think a, a lot to um, coping with that is knowing what you're dealing with and knowing that you're not alone and knowing that others are going through it and that there's help out there. Yeah. It's just not easy, but we made it through. You we did, and it. you, and you continue. It. I mean, your, your relationship is just, it's amazing, and, and, and it shows. <laughs> it, it's very authentic. Thank it, you. It's very authentic. Um, let's see. So go, I'm going back to when, when Lyndon says military wives are always um, the toughest. So you said that a military wife helped you through when you were down at Walter Reed at the Fisher Houses. So um, what would be your advice for other, um, other, military, other wives. military wives that might be going through the same thing? Yeah, um, to all the military wives out there, um, just stay strong and put God in the center of your family. Amen. Yeah, so I can he gets all the glory and it's praise. Stay strong, yeah, <laughs> stay strong. Yeah. Yeah, well, God's actually our CEO. He's for Boots CEO. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm just the chief enthusiasm officer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's the CEO. Yes. Well, should we bring the family out? Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. Let's bring this beautiful family out. Okay, Cindy, so we have your beautiful family here yes. that you talked about just so lovingly. And we thank you guys for everything that you do for the community. Now, Lyndon, you help us an awful lot. You volunteer for Roots for Boots. And we can consider that your way of continuing to serve your country. So thank you for your service. And we always say that when, when one member serves, the whole family serves. So Cindy, we want to thank you for your service as well and for everything that you've been through. Know that we love you all. Do you want to take time to introduce these beautiful people to us? Oh, this is my daughter, Ania. And this is my son, Gabriel. And? And my husband, <laughs> right here, <laughs> behind me. The man me. of the hour, Lyndon. The man who... Yes. Make me fall in love. His, yes, and his <laughs> life was changed mm -hmm. after a deployment in Afghanistan. So thank you all so much for being here. Um, you, you're, you're just wonderful. You're a beautiful, thank beautiful you. family. Thank you so much. And I know the Adams County um, family, community, loves having you all. Thank you. you know, thank you. In, in their community. So with that being said, Christy Lucas from Roots for Boots signing off on this episode of Open House.